theadventuresofmel.com, and tonight I'm Hi. introducing my husband, Dan, <laughs> and we're going to make three, we're calling them anti-game day appetizers because we're not really football fans. In fact, we kind of hate football, but we love the food that comes with all the parties, so. So tonight we're going to be making, uh, I got to look and see because I can't remember what we're making. <laughs> Uh, barbecue chicken cream cheese dip is our first thing on the menu. And then we're going to make chicken dip pinwheels. And then we're going to make ham and dill spirals, basically. They're really, they're little bite-sized. They're really yummy. So we're going to start with the barbecue chicken cream cheese dip since it has to bake. Can you refresh that quick so we can see comments? And then we'll take you step by step through the recipe so you can make them for your own game day parties or anti-game day parties, however you party with your friends and family. Is it showing up? Scroll down. Scroll down. There it is. Okay. All right. So we're going to start by Dan's going to shred up the chicken that we need for the barbecue cream, chicken cream cheese dip. I cannot talk tonight. So you're going to want to start with about a half to three quarters, maybe a pound of chicken breast pre-cooked. Um, I like to put it in the pressure cooker so it's nice and tender and, and comes apart pretty easily. And then I'm going to go ahead and spread a whole pack of cream cheese into the bottom of a pie plate. So. So. If you cook your chicken soon enough beforehand you can let it cool off a little bit so it shreds pretty easily by hand without burning your fingers. And we cooked it, did you tell them we cooked it in the instant pot? Pressure cooker. Pressure cooker, yeah. If you don't have an instant pot, I highly recommend it. And this is not a sponsored video, I just, we just really like ours. We make a lot of baby food with it and we cook uh, meat with it, vegetables, all sorts of things. So I'm just going to spread this cream cheese in the bottom of the pie plate. It's going to be a pretty thick layer because it's a whole 8 ounce package. And when we're done with this, I will pop the links to these recipes in the comments of the post. Can you refresh it again? I think somebody might be. Maybe not. There's a notification or something else. So once you have your, your chicken shredded, you're going to want to mix your barbecue sauce with it. And you're going to want about a half a cup of barbecue sauce. So these things don't have to be exact as long as you get the mixture that you want. cream cheese spread out. He's going to uh, put the barbecue chicken on top of the cream cheese and then we're going to pour ranch dressing on top of that. And you use about a third to, yeah, about a third of cup ranch dressing. And you spread the ranch dressing out on top of the chicken. While you do that, I'm going to go ahead and shred some I should have got a four shred before we did this. While he's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and shred. Usually this recipe calls for mozzarella, but I don't have enough mozzarella on hand. So we're going to use Colby Jack. And it takes about just enough to cover the top, probably about half a cup of Colby Jack. one of our kids favorite New Year's appetizers we make it every New Year's and we make it for the Super Bowl too we don't actually watch the game but we really like watching the commercials so and we always make yummy treats for those nights because these are these are occasional okay so we've got probably about half a cup of Colby Jack and I'm just gonna Spread that out on top of the ranch dressing. Ranch dressing. Do we need more, I think? A little more. Just 
but a little bit more. So what do you do by day, Dan, for your job? <laughs> Tell them a little bit about yourself. So, I manage the IT department for a, a company here in Arkansas. Um, we have roughly about a 176 members on our team uh, between here in New York, Chicago, um, a couple in San Francisco, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Texas, Florida. Um, got people spread all over, but um, so. Most of you that are watching us likely know where I work, but so, um, but so I just I manage everything IT related, you know, computers to internet security, uh, servers. So you know, I have a, a two-man team. Uh, my coworker Brandon and our intern Tim works with me as well. So, but in his spare time, he's a really phenomenal cook. He loves to cook. But now that this is ready, you can see all the loveliness in here. We're going to stick it in the oven and go on to the next recipe. And when you make the chicken dish, you want to make sure that you have something like tortilla chips or crackers on hand. And we'll show you after it's done how to serve it. Now we're going to go ahead and make chicken dip pinwheels. And they're basically the same type of uh, ingredients, but it's in a different, a little bit different format. So we're going to shred up another large chicken breast that we already cooked in the pressure cooker. And then I am going to mix our barbecue sauce, ranch, and cheddar, and the chicken in a small bowl once it's shredded. So we need a, we need a cup of shredded cheddar, so that's what I'm going to do. This is another um, bite-sized finger food. It's great for parties, but it's also great for uh, things like potlucks, church potlucks. Um, sometimes our homeschool group will want us to bring snacks, things like that. It's a really easy thing to fix for occasions like that. And it's kid-friendly too. Our kids really like these snacks. There, the next set of chicken is shredded nicely. We'll put it, reuse our bowl. Then you're going to add about a third of a cup barbecue sauce to that. shredded cheddar. And then you're going to mix that up really good. And I'm going to go ahead and start the process with the tortillas. Since we're going to wrap all this up into pinwheels. So I have taco sized tortillas. You're going to need about five, well five of them if you're serving a large, if you're making them for a party. I'm just going to make a couple tonight since it's just us. But basically you're going to grab that cream cheese. You're going to spread the cream cheese evenly onto each of your five tortillas. So you'll divide it up evenly between them. Probably a couple of tables, one or two tablespoons to each tortilla. cream cheese and just spread it out on your, I'm going to move this stuff so you can see what we're doing. You just spread it out evenly onto your tortilla. I have to look at my recipe still even though I made this recipe because I can never remember all the ingredients. Once you 
have the cream cheese, you're going to add a layer of lettuce leaves. You could even use spinach leaves if you wanted to. We're going to use lettuce. And you spread them out onto your tortilla. You can tear them into pieces. And then you add a layer of the chicken mixture. I'm going to get our platter. Okay, now that we got this mixed up and on here, we're going to roll it gently. So we got a nice roll. And then you want a nice sharp knife and you want to start cutting different little strips off. So the end is usually kind of a waste because there's not much there, but Depending on how much mixture you put inside, you may want a little bit larger tortilla as well. Do I want to make another one while we're waiting? We can. I guess we can, yeah. So we'll just mix up another one, and then we'll have, um, then we'll make our, show you how to make the ham and dill spirals. Mm. So this recipe is enough to make five batches of pinwheels, five tortillas. Um, our big platter probably when all was said and done um, so the next recipe we're making after this is um, ham and dill spirals and actually Dan found out about this recipe when he was at a cooking demo at was it Sam's Club or Walmart he was out grocery shopping and he uh, they had a cooking demo and they were serving these and he um, we he came home and we made them ourselves because they were so delicious. And it's been a few years ago. I, I think it was at, at Walmart. I think it was too. That was back when we lived in Missouri. But the lady that told me about it said that her family has been making them as long as she could remember. And she was probably in her 70s, and this has been probably 10 years ago now. So, you know, she said this was a, a very simple recipe that, that they've done as long as she could remember. So, that is done. Okay, so we're going to set that aside. We're not going to make the rest of them. And then we're going to go ahead and make the ham and dill sparks. And they are super easy. I forgot to get the pickles out. They are really easy. There's only four ingredients. Oh, the ham too. There's only four ingredients. You need tortillas, um, cream cheese, dill pickles, and ham. Just sliced ham will work, or even shaved ham works. So again, you're gonna spread your cream cheese, and it takes one to two tablespoons of cream cheese out onto your tortilla. I'm going to get a good size chunk of cream cheese. So your pickles, we're just using general kosher dill pickles. Um, I like dill the best 
uh, for this type of snack. But the first thing you want to do is, is you know, slice them in, in thin strips. So you're going to layer this on with the with the ham. So you see nice little pickle strips. The ham that we are using, and, and the ham that I like the best on this flavoring, we use an uncured um, ham that uh, we've been finding at Walmart, and it's no added sugar, no seasoning other than just the ham, and it really tastes delicious, just you know, really nice ham flavor without all the extras. But you just want to start with layering your a couple pieces of slices of ham on, and then just mix a couple slices of dill. Be generous. But not too generous. Yeah. Because <laughs> if it gets too big, you can't roll it up in the and make your pinwheel. So, and just like the previous recipe, you can see we've got a nice tortilla roll. Not tortilla, tortilla. Soft taco, flour tortilla. <laughs> flour circle. But you just slice it in little slices, and you can see they look pretty nice. I'm going to add these on here. Those are really good. You want to get another tortilla, mm -hmm. and we'll make another set of these. chicken dip should be done. Okay. So once again, take our pickle slices, deposit it on here. I'm doing this slightly backwards. And then take your ham, and put on here, I'm going to add a little bit more, and then again, you wrap it, pull it up, and slice it. I'm going to check on it. recipe with any kind of pickle you wanted just the dill pickle adds a flavor it adds a tanginess to it I don't think we've ever tried it with bread and butter or sweet pickles we tried it once with sweet pickles Did we try it with sweet pickles but the flavoring the, the pairing with the between the ham and the sweet pickles just wasn't the greatest the, same. the dill it just adds a nice flavor and the cream cheese just fills in and gives it a creaminess. So it's really delicious. Um, all right, so now our chicken dip is pretty much done and ready. It only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to cook it. So we're gonna get that out. And I like serving it with tortilla chips, but you could serve it with crackers, you could serve it with wasa bread, um, just about anything that you like. As long as it's crunchy, you can even serve it with veg like raw vegetables like carrots and celery. Nice melted cheese. It's like having chicken wings in a dip form is what it's like. So I'm gonna get a fork because it's kind of messy. Real with mozzarella, it's really stringy. 
Colby Jack, not so much. And you just dip your tortilla chips in it or you can put it on with your fork, doesn't matter. Just serve it, eat it, enjoy it. Everybody will enjoy it. This, we've taken this to different um, family dinners and stuff and we always get comments back on it how good it is. So it's a favorite appetizer. And it all goes down. <laughs> Here, so, take that. Hand me that. Anyway. <laughs> Trying to be nice and giving a plate to the kids that are standing here watching us. <laughs> Where do we put it? Down goes the light. I don't know. That was fine. You're sharing. Alright, so that's how to make these appetizers. Somebody's laughing. Who's laughing? <laughs> Someone's laughing at me. <laughs> Rhonda! Hi, Rhonda! And your dad's on here. And Betty and Ashley. Hi, everyone. So that is how to make these three appetizers. They're super easy to make. As you can tell, they're super quick. And I will put the links to each of the recipes in the comments once we're done and have everything cleaned up. So give me a few minutes and I'll have those in there for you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Next week we're going to be back. We're going to do this occasionally. We're thinking about doing it on a weekly basis, but not always cooking. Sometimes we might be doing um, DIY or outdoor projects or going out on outdoor adventures together. So we're going to... Oh, Rhonda's saying something. What's she saying? I need to get out of that. Nice recovery. <laughs> nice recovery. Did you really expect anything less? <laughs> So at least I didn't dance across the screen trying to get it. <laughs> so next week we'll be back. Um, since it's cold and flu season, we thought we would make uh, show you how to make a great big pot of chicken noodle soup, homemade. So we'll be back next Thursday night, probably about 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock? I think that was a good time. Yeah, 6 o'clock. Yeah, between 6 and 6.30 we'll be back. And we'll show you how to make a big pot of homemade chicken noodle soup for all of your cold and flu needs. And that's it. So we will see you next week. Thank you for watching.